Hi everyone, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. I also want to thank the original Super Glue for sponsoring today's video. So I have to say, this is probably one of the biggest IKEA hacks that I have ever done. And if you enjoy IKEA hacks, make sure to check the description box where I have a whole playlist on past IKEA hacks that we have done, but I'm pretty sure this one tops them all. And for a long time, the space behind me was actually our kitchen entryway. And this was sort of our drop zone where we stored shoes, backpacks, jackets, and coats during the fall and winter time. And even my purse and bags and sort of almost a collect all space too. It was very functional. We definitely needed the space. However, being in our kitchen, we needed more cabinet space more than we needed this drop zone. So this is definitely something I've been wanting to do for a very long time and I have a whole system planned for how we are going to move that drop zone to another place in the house. So make sure to subscribe so you can come back and see what we come up with for that. So today we're gonna to focus on this space, transforming it into a pantry storage system that is completely custom built with the help of some Ikea doors. I'm also gonna be featuring Total Tech by the original Super Glue. Throughout this tutorial, you'll see how handy this product comes in. But let's go ahead and head on into Ikea. I wanted to show you the specific doors that we purchased for this pantry system. These are the Grimo doors and they come in two different heights. And we ended up purchasing the 90 inch tall ones because we have nine foot ceilings. You can see this was a little bit more economical version of doors that they had to offer. They were only $50 each. We're also going to be building this with MDF versus wood because it's another more economical way to go with lumber prices being the way they are. We ended up getting both one by eights and one by fours for this project and make sure to check the description box and I will put a cut list of materials that we use to build this pantry. So first up was to basically clean up the space and get rid of everything that was there, clean it, prep it, get it ready for the new pantry system. So we're basically using a pocket hole system to build our frame and all of the pieces that run horizontal or parallel to the floor are going to get these pocket holes into that shorter end for us to build with. We're using the one by eights for the outside frame and shelves and some of those one by fours as bracing pieces. And here we're actually adding some original super glue wood glue onto our connecting pieces. You can even find this stuff at Dollar Tree. But that combination is what is going to make our piece extra strong and sturdy. I was super excited to have my hubby's help for this project. It helped to have some extra hands on board for piecing this all together and holding things while we situated things. But I wanted to show you the top of this that had the shelf on top and then the two brace pieces at the top. We mimicked that at the bottom, except we added a toe plate to the bottom before we started that shelf. That way it raised the cabinet up off the floor a little bit before we added that first shelf. It's also gonna give our doors some room to open and close. So this is after we had the frame built and then flipped it over. Now is a great time to start installing your doors because it's so much easier to install doors that are this size on the floor versus while you're standing up and having to hold things in place. So we did purchase the Ikea hinges as well for this and I'm so glad we did. It made it a lot easier to install and they're also soft closing hinges so we don't have doors that are gonna slam closed. Now we are making this a full on built in unit. So we needed to remove the baseboard where this unit was going to sit because it would have sat away from the wall. And we really wanted to attach this flush to the wall to make it safe and also give it a seamless look. Once we knew the unit was going to fit in place, we drilled through those back two brace pieces into the wall that marked the wall where we then added some anchors. We also then replaced the unit and drilled directly through those back plates again into those anchors to secure it. We added a few more screws to the top two to make sure everything was secured to the wall.
And now it's time to grab out our Total Tech that is by the original Super Glue. You guys know I love this product. We've used it in our bathroom renovation, my son's desk build. We've used it outside because it is all weather. And it's also great because it's for all materials. So this is one thing that you just need to grab from the store to use for all of your project needs. You can use it for crafting and you can also use it for renovations. And we're gonna be using it for both a sealant and as an adhesive for the rest of this project. You can see, like I said, we wanted to create a built-in look with this. So we used it to seal the gap between the wall and the cabinet. We're also sealing our baseboards. This is a great, trick if you have baseboards and they have that gap between the wall add some adhesive or the sealant in there and just smooth it out with your finger and you'll get more of a seamless look also what i love about this product is that it is also paintable I'll make sure to put a link down in the description box to Total Tech and where you can find that. Check that out after this video. You can see here, we have just installed this along the back of this cabinet. Again, just smoothing it so it fills in the gaps and it also gives that seamless look. We're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna be able to paint it and touch up the paint on the wall too. Now, I'm just gonna warn you, sometimes it becomes a snowball effect. We started realizing we had lots of gaps in the trim and on the door. We had recently installed this door and we never did seal it up. So we went ahead and did that since we had it all out and ready to go. And then after about an hour, we were able to paint. This is the paint that we use for all of the trim in the entire house. And we're also gonna be using that to paint out this cabinet. And I also used it to paint out the wall in the back so it looked like the backing of a cabinet, but it's actually just the wall. So this is after one coat of paint. It definitely needed about three coats before we were able to install the shelves, which is what I'm doing here. I'm adding Total Tech to the side brace pieces for these shelves using my level to make sure everything is even before installing them with some screws. And basically that is what's going to hold our shelves up. And I'm also adding some total tech to the tops of these brace pieces before adding a one by eight shelf onto the top and securing those in place with some one and a quarter inch brad nails. Now what I love about this project the most is that we were able to install shelves where we wanted them and however many that we wanted. So I had already purchased a few things for this cabinet, so I just kind of used them as a guide to make sure that my shelves were perfectly aligned with the items that were gonna be going inside. I wanted to insert a little tip here and you can see that top shelf that we installed first. I would highly recommend installing your shelves from bottom to top. Our Brad Nailer had trouble getting into smaller tight spaces, but if you install your shelves from bottom to top, you won't run into that problem. And of course we are using our total tech all along the way as we install all of these shelves. And here is what is finally starting to look like. I actually needed to add some more paint to the shelves that we added in there, but lots of awesome storage is happening. We also purchased Ikea handles to add to the fronts of these, but they didn't come pre-drilled. So a little tip here is to add some painter's tape to the front and the backs of your finished wood so that you don't get a sort of ripped or blowout effect. You'll get a clean, drilled hole for you to install your handles to. I also taped off all the trim. Like I said, it's that snowball effect. Once you start touching up paint, then you realize it's all kind of needing touched up. So not only did I paint the wall, but I also painted the trim. 
And then there is just something so satisfying whenever you remove the tape to reveal that clean line. I definitely recommend to pull off your tape before your paint has dried so that it doesn't start peeling paint off with it. And here is a look at our finished, completely painted, brand new custom built pantry. I love the doors that are soft close and I love that it just looks like it was made to be here. We have a very small amount of space here so a custom cabinet was the perfect solution. So I definitely could be more happy or more excited to have all this extra storage in our kitchen now. And as you can see, it has really opened up this walkway for us, which we were definitely needing. And I also want to give you a sneak peek at the inside of this cabinet. But you'll have to come back for that video as I have a full tutorial on how I do all of the organization and storage solutions inside of the pantry. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll have more IKEA hack videos popping up on your screen that you can check out next. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.